Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an incident at a build site leaves a group of Kentucky construction workers with injuries. And a Georgia woman counts down the days to when she'll be reunited with her once long lost dog who was found all the way in West Virginia. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is now 6.30 on April 27th. Let's check in with Brandon Robinson as I just looked outside a few minutes ago and it looks like the sun is starting to rise. It's trying to. Sun, the clouds. Here's the, here's the thing, on. Olivia, the sun always comes up. It's True. just if we can see it or not. If yeah, I couldn't tell if I could see it this yeah, morning or exactly. not. Exactly. <laughs> it's trying. It's trying real it hard is. out there this morning, but the clouds may overtake it just a little bit today. But I think we'll see a mix of sun and clouds for the first few hours before those clouds take over and the rain chances come back. Let's take a look at downtown Whitesburg this morning. No major issues. Hard to tell there from that vantage point if the sun is coming up. Some light traffic there heading on to Main Street this morning, and we're seeing not a whole lot of activity down that way. Temperatures in the 30s in Irvin, Manchester, Clintwood, Grundy, and that is it for the moment. They're in the warmest spots in the region there in Monticello, Jackson, Pikeville, Wise. I'm trying to figure out if there's anybody else that I'm missing. Somerset, and basically that's all between 46 and 48 there. So in true Jeopardy style, what is today's forecast for $400? And you'll see that it's going to be 71. And what is rain chances return to our region a little bit later on? Olivia? All right, thank you, Brandon. Four people were sent to a hospital after an accident at a Richmond construction site. One man was trapped by the collapse of building materials. Chad Hedrick and photojournalist Darnell Crenshaw have the details. Basically, we got called to uh, a structure collapse that trusses had collapsed into the structure. Uh, when we arrived on scene, we found four patients that were transported to the hospital. Richmond Fire Chief Sam Kirby says the accident happened around 945 Wednesday morning on Four Mile Road. Eyewitnesses tell Chief Kirby the construction crew was placing trusses on the building. The last two collapsing in the middle, creating a domino effect, pulling the rest of the trusses down. There was one that was pinned inside that they, the crane operator actually got them out before we got here. They were all oriented and could speak to uh, the paramedics. We're just uh, very sad uh, for the workers that were injured. We're asking everyone just please keep them in their prayers. Mandy Agee is the assistant director of God's Outreach Madison County Food Bank. The building where the accident happened will be a 10,000 square foot warehousing center for the nonprofit. She says the food bank's East Main Street location in Richmond needs additional space to serve the people of Madison and Estill counties. The new warehouse is located two miles away from the food bank. It was paid for by a million dollar grant from the state. AG says Wednesday's accident will delay the new site's opening slated for late May. But right now, her focus is on the well-being of those four construction workers. God, please be with those people. Um, please keep them safe. Uh, let them not have any long-lasting effects and um, just be with them. In Richmond, Chad Hedrick, WYMT Mountain News. The condition of those four workers is unknown at this time. OSHA will be on the scene to evaluate the situation. Parkinson's disease impacts more than 2 million people in the United States. In order to help those impacted, one London-based group will be hosting an event to bring awareness to this disease. The organization Parkinson's in Motion will be hosting the 5K run or walk for all of the London Laurel County Farmers Market on Saturday. The event will serve as an opportunity for people to come together and get active, all while connecting families with the tools and resources they need to fight the disease. We want to reach this desert where there's no treatment, there's no um, there's no exercise, there's nothing for Parkinson's patients available in eastern Kentucky. Um, so we're, I've made connections in far eastern Kentucky and we're hoping to bridge that gap and bring in more help for and more resources for people in the eastern part of the state. If you are looking to take part in the event, there is still time to register. We have more information about the event on our website, wymt.com. 
July's historic flood took a toll on everyone, but for numerous first responders, the flood brought an entirely different set of pressures and worries. Following that devastating day, several eastern Kentucky departments have gone above and beyond in serving the area. WYMT's Alyssa Williams sat down with members from one local the fire department to share their story of service following the flood. As July 28th's flood was ravaging the region, countless first responders were working to help people escape the rising waters, despite having all odds stacked against them. Uh, up in here, we didn't have uh, our, our phone tower went down, and so the communication was slim pickings. Working with what they had, those with the Rousseau Fire Department in Breathitt County hit the ground running with rescues. On the third day, um, we, we actually uh, rescued 18 people on the third day of the flood. Uh, 12 of them was in an attic. Once rescues were completed, volunteers shifted focus. Immediately um, on the fourth day, which was on Saturday, uh, we cleaned everything out and started doing distribution, opening up and, and doing what we've been doing. Volunteers would make lists of what people needed, then work to fulfill those needs. Well, at, at first it was crazy. Um, I, I mean, we were super swamped. Uh, not, not only our jurisdiction, you know, we took care of, but, you know, we went into the county. Um, we, we delivered 50 days uh, just throughout Breathitt County alone, um, not counting the other counties that, that we went into. And so it, it was hectic. Uh, um, there was times that we didn't get home to 12, 1 o'clock at night and get right back up six o'clock in the morning and do it again. While many organizations were ending their flood relief efforts, the Rousseau Fire Department pushed on, even taking time to make holidays special for those impacted by the flood. Well, that's the thing of it is, is, is we knew um, that that's gonna happen. Um, unfortunately, uh, I can speak for myself and, and my crew. I know that, that we're, we've been wore out. Um, we're, we're tired. I mean, that's, that's the honest truth. Um, but when, when you stop and, and you think for a minute, um, what if that was me, then the tide changes, um, you know. So if I was in their position and I've lost everything, then I'd want help too. And so that's kind of what keeps us going and, and, you know, yeah, we're tired. We are, sure we are, but we got to keep on and help these people. And volunteers are still continuing this work running a distribution center from their building even eight months later. I love the, the statement Ronald Reagan made, uh, nobody can help everybody, but everybody can help somebody. And that's, that's really true. Uh, so we just do what we can do with what we got to do with. And when asked how much longer they will continue to give back. And here's what we say. Um, as long as the Lord provides it, we're going to, we're going to go with it. Um, when the Lord says, hey, that's, that's it and you're done, then we know that we're done. But until then, we're going to keep on doing what we've been doing. From rescuing people from flood water to rescuing them from the hardships that come after the water dries up. The 2023 East Kentucky Leadership Award for Organization goes to the Rousseau Fire Department. Those with the Rousseau Volunteer Fire Department say they would have not been able to do it without the help they received from generous donors and multiple groups from North Carolina. Hazel Robinson said she started working at Custom Cleaners and Hazard in her early 20s. Recently retiring, Robinson spent nearly 50 years dry cleaning clothes, showing people love and leading them to the Lord. She says she knows God put her there for a reason. I just feel like that he put me here for a purpose, and I have been blessed by this job, and I've never dreaded a day. In 2017, the road Custom Cleaners is located on was named Hazel D. John Robinson Way. In West Virginia, a pet dog that vanished in the state of Georgia six years ago was found during the weekend in Wayne County. The owner got the thrilling unexpected news that she'll get to reunite with that dog soon. Andrew Colgrove has the story on how that dog will be making his way home. This pit bull, Chief, 
happy and healthy and the subject of one of those rare, unlikely stories. It's heartwarming. It's pretty amazing. Honestly, never thought I would see him again. His owner, Tara Hillis, lives in Georgia and says he disappeared from her property in 2017 when he was one and a half years old. He either jumped the fence or dug up under it. Weeks turned into months, then into years, with no word on his whereabouts. Initially, I thought somebody might have took him to try to breed him, but he's fixed. So many years go by, you just kind of like, oh, I miss him. A couple people say they found Chief Saturday alone, wandering at East Lynn Lake in Wayne County, and brought him to the Huntington Cabo Wayne Animal Shelter. He's just a big baby. Workers here were able to find Tara's contact information thanks to a chip she had put in him. I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. This is. Like, this is insane. After six years, Tara had pretty much given up any hope that she would ever be seeing Chief again, and she was thrilled when she got the phone call he'd been found. Did you cry? <laughs> it's already given me chills. Rachel Boone is the canine behavior specialist at the shelter. Soon he will have his forever again. Um, with the people he needs to be with, with his family. Every single time I would talk about it all day that day, my, I would just get chill bumps. If I think about my dog missing that long, it makes me want to cry. Like, I already want to cry for her. What do you think that's going to feel like for you that first moment you get to see him and hold him again? Emotional. <laughs> and I pray to God that he remembers us. What sort of incredible journey Chief's had over these years and how he ended up so far away, Tara may never know. But the gaps in the story, nothing compared to the hole in her heart that's been filled. Andrew Colgrove, WSAZ News Channel 3, Huntington. Tara says they're still ironing, ironing out the details of how Chief will get back home. She says someone from the shelter has offered to drive him halfway there to her friend's house. That's expected to happen on Monday. Six forty two here on this Thursday morning. We continue to look at some cameras across the region, the Mountain Parkway along the Wolf Pound County line up near Slade looking OK this morning. Light traffic 46 up that way to start the day across the rest of the region. 30s, 40s out there this morning. Looks like 37 in Clintwood is our coldest spot. 48 in Monticello and Jackson, our warmest spots this morning. As we head to the outdoor forecast, we are going to be seeing sun and clouds or partly to mostly cloudy skies for the first half of the day. Second half, the rain chances rejoin us and they'll stick around for a while going into the nighttime hours and tomorrow as well. Olivia. All right, thank you, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 642, still to come on Mountain News this morning. People suffering from ALS might soon have an effective treatment after accelerated approval from the FDA. Stay with us. That's on the way next.